Welcome to Channel 36 in West Hollywood. And my name's Lorraine Stewart, and the show is called Between Takes. And I've had fabulous people on the show. But I think, Barbara, this is going to be the best show because, <laughs> let me introduce you first, anyhow. I have Dr. Barbara Lamb, clinical therapist. And she drove all the way from Claremont to come with us tonight. Barbara, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Okay, and tonight we have a great subject. A yes. subject um, I think where a lot of people don't like to talk about because they're afraid. And then other people say about aliens that they don't want us to know anything going on. Washington doesn't want anything going on. Why? I don't have the faintest idea. But how in the world did you ever get into anything like this? What motivated you? And then, well, <laughs> please. It's a long story. Um, back don't make in, it too long. <laughs> okay, back in, I, quickly, quick run through. Uh, back in 1976, I became licensed as a psychotherapist and did a regular practice mm -hmm. with regular people, and I still do to some extent. And then I got into uh, regression therapy and hypnosis work, and that eventually led to uh, people coming to me beginning in 1991, uh, people who had had experiences with extraterrestrial beings. And they okay, came for regressions me. because okay, they wanted to know of the details of those experiences, which they could usually remember just the first few moments of. And they knew something else happened for a while. And the regression work, hypnotic regression, is wonderful because the person can have the sense of reliving the whole experience of that encounter and knowing the details. Yeah, but were they calm? Were they excited? Were they frightened? Well, very, and excuse me, how did you know this is true? Just what they're saying. Mm -hmm. How, how, how do, do you I really know it's know? true? Well, when doing a regression, uh, the person is in a very, very deep state of relaxation in order to do the regression. And I'm watching the person carefully, watching the breathing, the facial expressions, any body movement that's going on. And so I have been convinced with the 1,750 people Hear I've that? regressed Seven? to wow. ET experiences, um, I've been really convinced that they are not just imagining these things, but they are really reliving in the regression experiences that they've actually had. Well, all these people can't be wrong. And no. all these people all over the world can't be wrong. This That's right. It, right. Yes, and you're right, absolutely, Lorraine, that there are people all over the world who are having these sort of mysterious encounters with extraterrestrial beings. I mean, this has been going back years and years and years ago in every country, not only here, and That's celebrities. Right. Yes. I saw and I read up on the computer about these celebrities that have seen and they have pictures and videos of uh, the spaceships. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. There that are come so close to them. Many. There are thousands and thousands of people's videos of UFOs and even more photographs. A lot of them do get put on the Internet. Um, so I, I became convinced by 1991, uh, not having really paid any attention to this phenomenon before that, I, I became convinced by seeing all the pictures and hearing some of the speakers who were working with people who'd had these experiences. And so I, I became convinced that it, it must be true. And now, after 26 years of doing this work, I'm totally convinced. And not only that many people are having experiences with extraterrestrial beings, quite a number of beings from many different planets, it seems. Yeah, from the yeah. galaxy. I mean, there's yes. so many different worlds. There has oh, to be yeah. so many different worlds. Excuse yes. me, are you, have you ever thought, or you had a feeling that maybe uh, because you're treating these people, 
that you might have an encounter with an alien? Have you ever thought of that? Well, I have not only thought of it, but there are four encounters that I have had and that I do know about and did You have, yourself? Yes, and I had a colleague regress me to each one of those. Oh my goodness. Now the beings in each one of those experiences were quite different from each other. That they were totally different species and presumably from different parts of the universe, I would think. Okay. Yeah, and they all were very um, acceptable, uh, very friendly. benign, friendly. In fact, uh, one of them, the beings, there were about 10 beings all in a row, and they were lovely, Excuse me, but beautiful Barbara, wait, wait a beings. Second. Did they take you on a spaceship, in a spaceship, or did they come in your home, or what? Well, when, when um, you were driving the, the on the first road? Time, uh, the first time, actually, in 1994, I asked for the experience, and I really meant it. I asked to be taken for the making of a crop circle because I was doing crop circle research every what's, summer. Excuse me, what's crop circle? What, well, what? those are beautiful patterns that are laid down in agricultural fields, okay. um, mostly in England, but they happen all over the world uh -huh. as well. And I had long suspected that they were done by some kinds of beings from elsewhere. They certainly didn't seem to be coming from humans, or very rarely from humans. And so I asked to be taken by the makers of the genuine crop circles, and I was. That wish was was granted. Well, why and, did you think that it couldn't be? It would have to be something or somebody from another planet, or not us doing that, that crop well, circle. Because why? The, what made you get that feeling? And because the that? crop circles were um, full of special energies that could not be made by people. Well, well did you yeah. walk there? Did you oh, feel yes. the energy? What oh, type of energy? Yes. What did it do to you? What? Oh, I've been in a few thousand crop circles over the years. What happened And I to can you? tell the difference between what we call a genuine one made by somebody else and uh, different than what the human beings mm -hmm. can make. There are some hoaxed crop circles done by human young men, but, but they really feel different and they look different and they have different features Can I in ask the crops you how that have been laid down. The ones that they do, the aliens, what features like if, like I said, you walk there, uh, how, how do you feel? Do you feel like electricity uh, touching you or going into you? How, well, how is not, it? What it, type yeah. of emotion do you get? Oh, yeah, I get a wonderful emotion. Uh, just Well, first of all, when I'm approaching a crop circle through a tractor track line, they call them tramway lines. Do you walk or you're in the tractor? Uh, no, no, you walk through the field okay. in one of the tractor tracks okay. to get out to the middle of the field, which is where the crop circle usually is. And this is at night? Uh, no, I usually visit them in day. During the day? They are usually made at night, uh, but with some exceptions. But uh -huh. uh, I visit them during the day so I can really see them. Okay. And for one thing, I can see where I'm going, okay. <laughs> which helps, <laughs> especially on some of those very dark nights. <laughs> so um, I'm walking along the tractor track to get to the crop circle, it's a beautiful view. I mean, it's lovely countryside. and. Wiltshire County, England, and, uh, and, then, and but, but there's nothing unusual in terms of the frequency or the vibration. But as soon as I step into the crop circle, the laid down portion of the wheat that's usually been swirled into a circle or different patterns. Okay, and excuse me. When you I said they laid, in, they laid down, is yeah who, the 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 stalks which were standing, like all the stalks in the whole field, right. like wheat, let's mm -hmm. take the example of wheat, that in the making of a crop circle, they are laid down at ground level. But not by the farmers. No, not by the farmers. The farmers but have the other nothing to do with this at all. Okay. Farmers don't even know it's happening because it usually happens at night and the farmers are sound asleep 
in their own houses, you know. So they're laid down and swirled and shaped and curved into beautiful That's patterns. That's beautiful. So the feeling in going into one, it's not quite as sharp as an electrical shock, uh -huh. but it, there is a feeling of heightened energy. Beauty and beauty. And definitely beauty, yes. Oh, so they are so. artistic. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So very I, I was very extremely interested and still am in the crop circle phenomenon. What do they look like? Oh, they're the beautiful aliens. symbols. No, I mean the, oh, the aliens. aliens. Yes. Oh, well, would you these describe little aliens which, which who you took me for the making of the crop circle, um, they seem to be quite short and they had a slightly irregular, bumpy sort of skin, rounded heads. Uh, long skinny arms, long skinny fingers, and I never got a good look at them because the two that were piloting the ship were sitting in barrel-shaped chairs in front of me. Oh my so heavens. I could just see sort of the back and the side of their heads and the long arms. Yeah, I see pictures of that with the long arms and mm -hmm. then the eyes, no pupils. Just dark eyes. Yes, is that and I true? Uh, that's very mm -hmm. often true, but with these particular beings, this species, mm -hmm. I couldn't really get a good look at their eyes. There were three beings behind me, but I didn't really get a good look at them. I saw their silhouettes, but I didn't wow. really see their features. Okay, now after now, this, where else did you encounter them? Okay, well, that was the first time, and then the second time, to my great surprise, in the middle of one afternoon, with plenty of daylight coming in the window of my home, I walked into the living room, and there was a full-bodied, physical uh, reptilian oh, species. Yes, e I read that today, like a reptile amphibian. Yes, he probably would be amphibian. Anyway, he was a reptilian male, and usually before that, I had always been very uh, uncomfortable, very skittish about ever touching snakes or lizards or anything reptile, right? Uh, earth reptiles. But this being, even though he was reptilian and very strong, very muscular looking. Short or he, tall? Uh, just a little bit taller than I, so he was probably about five foot six, I would say. Did he have long, thin arms like the other one? No, ones? he didn't have long, he thin arms. Different. He had a very muscular neck and shoulders. He had the kind of build that you see when you watch uh, champion gymnasts. Oh my you know, God, very you, nicely muscled afraid? all over. No, that is the amazing thing. He exuded such a wonderful feeling and a friendliness and a safety that to my surprise, I went right over to him and took his outstretched hand, and we held hands in a handshake position. Oh my God, what did he say to you? For the few you? minutes that he was there. What did he say to First you? First of all, he talked telepathically, which many and many of these extraterrestrial species do. What do you mean by that? Rather, Tele well, in other words, they send the thought from their minds mm -hmm. and then we pick it up with our minds. That's telepathic. Oh, so it's by thought? He didn't speak. Thought. No, he didn't open a mouth and use a voice. Did he have a mouth? Well, I never did really see the mouth, but I think that's because it was down by his chin. And oh I just, my you know, his goodness whole gracious. face <laughs> shape was different than ours. And um, anyway, he told me that he was there to reassure me that the regression experiences that I was hearing from right. my clients, that these visits were actually real, that visitors, as he said, from elsewhere uh, really do come to Earth and really do have encounters with people, not with all people, but with certain people. And <laughs> now, he was hospital. Did you offer him some coffee or tea? <laughs> no, no. In fact, I didn't well, say anything to him. I think he was there for five or six minutes, I would guess. 
and then suddenly poof, he disappeared. Poof, he poof. was he was gone. A lot of the beings have been reported to do that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This and is. And then the, the third incident was I was driving in my car at midnight one night down the California coast, Southern California, uh, 101 freeway. And it was around midnight. I was by myself. And it was very strange. I thought that there were no other cars on the freeway. And then I saw a big, what I thought was a big trailer truck, uh, sort of very close to the road with light glowing from underneath it. Uh -huh. And what I thought were people walking around it. So as I drove closer, I thought, oh, oh, there's a truck and the driver and the occupants are, are out to change a tire mm -hmm. or something, sure. you know, sure. something normal, <laughs> I thought. Um, and then, but I went past it and then there was a huge flash of light right in front of my windshield and the windshield cracked. So I was very distressed, and, but I kept on driving because I had two and a half hours yet mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, get home mm -hmm. that night and had to be home there. And, um, but about three weeks later, I uh, met with Dolores Cannon, who's a very well-known regression therapist. Okay. And she regressed me to that experience. And we found out that my mm. car and I, even though I was holding onto the steering wheel and the motor was off, my car and I were taken up in the air? In a diagonal, up oh, into the air. Oh my goodness. In a goodness. beam of bright light, oh. similar to the beam you see here in this picture. And, um, and then on board, uh, I was greeted by lots of little short beings whom, with the big black eyes, and I thought they were really cute. They were just darling. And they looked so curious. There were probably about 20 of them that all swarmed around me and took me to a room. And in the room, I was put in a chair with my arms on the arms of the chair. Okay. And an electrical current was sort of run through me. And you weren't frightened at all? You were totally relaxed no, with I, these people? No, I was, I, because I was excited that well, after all, that. I'd probably already regressed at least a thousand people, and some of them to many, many regressions. So, okay, so I was what comfortable then? with it. When knew, you had your hands knew that they were okay. all returned. Okay. So I felt safe in that sense. Okay, excuse me. And so what happened yeah. when you were so on the So then I noticed that um, past these short beings who sort of formed an apron around me was a very tall white being with big black eyes. And he started talking to me telepathically. Okay. And, um, he said, we are not harming you in any way. Don't worry about it. He said, we are just downloading information from your brain. Oh, that's why they want to. Yeah. Could I ask you something telepathically? Okay. Now, that's coming to you, okay? I understand that, like a message thing. Mm -hmm. but. Clearly and everything, very, very clearly. Clear. Very but how about the distinct. tone? What tone of voice? And well, I'm just it, it seems like there you can even pick up a tone of voice, even though you don't hear it with your ears. You just hear it in your mind. And it's the same way with telepathically communicating to them that I think the thought, as if I would be saying it out loud, but just thinking the thought, so that, that has inflection, you know, when you mm -hmm. think. Oh, you definitely. You think it within yourself. Um, you very often have inflection and feeling and so forth. Uh -huh. um, so it, it's very, very clear. And he wanted to know about the people I had been regressing who were having extraterrestrial encounters. He wanted to know what they knew about them before they had the regressions and what they found out in the regressions about their encounters mm. and how the whole thing of having these encounters was actually affecting them. 
And then the woman who was regressing me, Dolores Cannon, uh, she started asking questions. She said, Barbara, ask him such and such. Right. Um, ask him what they do with the information. And so he told me, and then I said it out loud to her. And that's how we communicated for quite a while. And um, for another hour or so, in fact. Right. Excuse and, me, Barbara, yeah. but they, they've done this to so many people, get all this information, and uh, do they want it like one day maybe control the universe maybe? Because they're so highly technical so. compared to us. Yeah. I, I have seen, well, I have done at least 2,400 regressions oh my goodness. of these 1,750 people. And um, I've seen no evidence whatsoever that any of those species who visit these people, right. um, that any of those species have given any indication whatsoever that they want to be in control, control here or, or take over the world or anything. And they all have different agendas, all these different species. Now, the ones that we tend to hear about publicly uh, tend to be put in a very frightening negative light. And I think that part of my purpose mm -hmm. of even talking about this at all is to bring forth the fact that many of these beings are very, very positive. Many of them are Good energy. Good energy. No negativity. Right. In fact, uh, many of them are described by the people who experience them as being unconditionally loving. Whoa, what do so they, they, what do you think they eat? Uh, what, what type well, of Well, I think that um, life from is what we've been able to tell from these regressions, when questions like that are asked or, uh -huh. or when they talk about that, uh, they tend to not eat meat the way that we do. They tend to uh, stay away from animal products. So it's I, mostly plant, I would you think? say we are, they are probably mostly, as far as I know, uh, mostly vegetarians. Like vegan? <laughs> well, it could be, yeah, probably. <laughs> Follow the vegan diet, think, the aliens, yeah, oh my goodness yeah. gracious. Yeah, I think so. I, and you know, you don't ever hear of fat aliens. I don't think there's any obesity uh, that I've ever heard of. I know, you, because, we've never uh, heard. Maybe because they do have good diets like that. Oh, this, Probably is, good this practices. is so fascinating. And not, yeah. only, not only that, listen, she tells me, Barbara has told me that, um, I asked her, of course, I said, how, how do they um, you know, make their babies? Do they have sexual intercourse? And she said, they don't. And I well, said, whoa, I said, what is this? And it's <laughs> done through genetics. You see, there are so many different species of extraterrestrials, and some of them are capable wow. of, some of their females do have a type of womb and can bear an offspring. Oh, they do? And have okay. baby, a f some okay. of, a few of them that I have been aware of. Uh -huh. But most of them do reproduction by cloning or adding genetics uh, to their females. Okay, okay. And so, and well, some of them, um, that tall white one I mentioned yeah, with the yeah, little yeah, ones yeah. around, um, he said that his species uh, produces eggs. So the female will uh, gestate Hatch her eggs. an egg, ju usually just one at a time, not, oh a, my not a whole goodness. brood. Awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then then that kind of being comes out of the egg. Okay. Yeah, so that's a different type. And the, see, we have um, reptilian types. We have very human seeming. Do they look? Some of them look like us. Like when yes. they uh, connect with a human from Earth. Okay, would they look like us? Yes, uh, many of them. Uh, for instance, some of the races which we call Nordics because they look like Scandinavian humans and uh, Pleiadians. Um, what's and, Pleiadian? What, what's uh, well, the Pleiades are a group of planets, okay. seven major planets okay. 
in the Pleiadian system. And they have different species on some of those planets, but a lot of them are very human looking. You know, they'll have hair and faces and eyes and everything. And we have them right here on Earth. Well, we some have of them, yes. Some, some of them of here, and you said they're doctors, professors, and everything. And their children, when they connect, are called hybrids. Can you yes, write well, a hybrid? Right. The hybrid program is what I have been specializing in for the last very few years. That is, doing a lot of research on, uh, learning a tremendous amount, writing this, this wonderful fabulous book. book she Meet has. The Meet hybrids. the hybrids. Oh, my glory. I mean, I could go on and talk to you for hours and hours oh, and yeah. hours. Would you come on again? We're going to do another show. Is that okay? <laughs> A right. couple months from now? Okay. We'll talk about the children right. of the aliens, okay? The and hybrid children. folks, it's true. If you don't want to believe it or not, mm -hmm. millions of people can't be wrong, and this doctor has experienced so many things. So I'd love your cover. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so the cover is suggesting that here is a person who's coming from another dimension, another frequency, because some of these extraterrestrial beings are in different dimensions. Right. So they have created hybrids who are living here with us on Earth. Right now. And I've had the privilege of knowing about 13 of these hybrids. Okay, can I ask you one? Excuse me. Wonderful also, people. Do they, they never age? Are they like us? Do they age or don't they age? No, they do age because they have such a large component of human being in them. Too bad I thought there would be yeah. some longevity here. <laughs> I know. I, they probably would like that too. Yeah. Actually, but, though, the hybrids in this book meet the hybrids. Um, all okay. we featured eight, even though okay. I know okay. more okay. than eight. Um, Excuse they, me, Barbara. They're yeah. telling me that the show is ending already. I can't believe it. Okay, <laughs> okay. but we're going to talk some more. All right. You know, you're amazing. You really are, and I hope everyone enjoyed the show. We're going to do more of this, and uh, the best show, the best show. Great. And mm -hmm. thank you so much. It was you just wonderful welcome. meeting you, <laughs> and uh, everyone's going to be really interested in this. I know <laughs> that right. I'd always be interested in aliens and outer space. But thank you, Channel 36, and yes. next time. Okay, Barbara? <laughs> That's great. Oh, isn't this something? <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh. I love it. I love yeah, it. With each question, oh, there was oh, there, so there's much so that much could be said. So much. I know, and I knew that we kind of wanted to at least show. mention. Yeah, an hour, another hour. Oh.